What's up, guys? I am Caleb Giddings. And I am Keith. And I'm Jack. And this is the nicest episode of Gun Day Brunch that you'll ever listen to. If you don't get that joke, I you must not like be on the internet. You, you I don't internet. I, I, yeah, don't I don't know. Joke, I mean, internet. Uh, I do want to start this episode off by complimenting Jack's background today, which is a photo of Chris Costa and Travis Haley from the Magpul uh, shotgun DVDs, which were part of the dynamic war stick. Art of the hate crimes, war crimes, <laughs> not hate art. crimes, not hate crimes. <laughs> we'll fix that in post. <laughs> no, we won't. I'm leaving that shit in. <laughs> art of the Germany says nine. Yeah. I, you know, I always how oh, dare you guys. I always appreciated that because, like the the irony of the country that was using mustard gas to kill people, saying that weapon is too much of a war crime. I'm like, what? That's how you know it's good. It's like, awareness, <laughs> not high, not not a not a not a. Well, let's, let's think about like the shotgun that was the World War One shotgun, which I is have not. One. Yeah, it's not your daddy. It's the Winchester ninety seven. Yeah, eighteen ninety seven. Eighteen ninety seven. Eighteen ninety seven. It's got the heat shield on it. It would slam fire. Yep, and there, was, 18... there was no disconnector in the trigger system. It had an external hammer. An eighteen inch bayonet. Look. <laughs> that doesn't sound fun if I've been in it. Like, this is my trench, which has been my home for several months. Occasionally, we we gingerly fire around at each other like, ha-ha, take that, you Brit. And I'm just sitting here writing home to my little schnitzel wife. And, and suddenly, a gas mask bedecked U.S. Marine in, like, the weirdest pants ever drops into the trench, looks at me and all my, like, German buddies, and we're like... Da, and you just slam fire and then stab whatever you didn't slam fire, bro. No, we are writing someone about this. Like this is yeah, not. I okay. will be writing my Congress, Schnuffin. Congress, Schnuffin. Turns yeah. you and nine of your buddies into Schnitzen Grubel and then bounces. Are we just are we just making up German words here and just saying yes. things yes. that sound roughly yes. German? <laughs> no, you don't know what Schnitzen Grubel. Very is. very sensitive yeah. to the German people in the nicest episode. Hey Clearly hey not. hey, look at me, look at hey, me. Hey hey hey, before we, before we make up any German words, we don't have any German advertisers, do we? No, H&K great. Will they hate us. Never pay us. No, but we do have these people as advertisers. Slate in. The banner. Slate out the banner. Anyway. Uh, oh, man. All right. So uh, we don't actually have a, a topic for this week's episode. Uh, we want. I wanted to review. I do actually sometimes enjoy reading comments, um, which I've gotten. gotten some I, dudes. I read one the other day that was just like, two letters over and over and over again but it wasn't ha ha it was just like row, 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 row. i was like and then he replied to himself saying the same thing i was very confused by that my favorite is when people say say mean things and then like their comment I'm like, <laughs> like, they i say, will boost this starting right now and i'm like um okay homie that's not how uh this works but our, okay, uh, let's see. We did have a great comment on the Larry episode where they refer to uh, Larry's backyard as Post Malone Peak. So <laughs> <laughs> people trying to be peeking at Post Malone in there. So you know, <clears throat> well, so Larry shared the um, the episode with people, mm-hmm. like put it up there, and like you know, he has a lot of friends and fans and stuff on his page. And one person goes, Jack Clemens is on a podcast? I have no idea who this person is. <laughs> I, I I deeply enjoy when people uh, recognize me from other things here. They're like, wait a minute, aren't you the guy from, you know, and then they pick whatever random piece right. of news they've interacted with me. And I'm like, yes, uh, aren't I Aren't you the guy from the past event? Yes. yes. In fact, I still, I still do things and show up places. And work. Aren't you the guy from the internet? Uh... <clears throat> okay, here we go. Oh, we're here's from, something that we can talk about. We're from the internet so, and we're not here to help. Uh, one of the videos uh, from our channel from a, a ways back before we actually were doing, well, we were doing it, but this was doing the show, but this one wasn't an episode of the show. 
But this was my case for why Magnum Force is the best Dirty Harry movie. And we're going to talk about this because we like to talk about movies. First off, Magnum Force is the best Dirty Harry movie. No question. Uh, I will not like there's no discussion for any of the other movies. We will not coming. be taking questions at this time. Okay, look, the only the only argument that you can make is that Dirty Harry is better than Magnum Force, which is an argument we can entertain. None of the movies that come after Magnum Force are at all possibly capable of being better than it. Brian Murphy has a comment from seven days ago. It's a great sequel, but it's like the folks who say Empire Strikes Back is better than Star Wars. How can you rate the first definitive iconic Dirty Harry movie less than the second one? Uh, I'll tell you exactly how I can. It's not as fucking good. It's the same, the same who, for, em, who for Empire. Who is arguing that Empire isn't better than Star Wars? No, Empire that's his point. Objectively saying, better than Star Wars. Right, yeah, his Star point Wars is that Star top, Wars is better time, because it but... came first, and thus it has to be better than empire strikes back and i'm like sir mr murphy sir without getting into details your first time at anything isn't as good <laughs> uh it doesn't make automatically make your sequel better like you actually have to make it better yeah you gotta work at top it Gun maverick but i'm talking about shooting yeah, absolutely. <laughs> my my first time shooting was not very good either that's definitely what we're talking about but no like and so here's the interesting thing about that right so you know, you talk about let's think about sequels that were better than the original, right? So obviously, Magnum Force, uh, Empire Strikes Back. Um, this isn't a sequel that's better than the original, but the Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade is better than Temple of Doom. So the third one is better than the second one in this sure case. Um, um, I'd argue Terminator Two. Oh yeah, Terminator. for sure. Terminator. Yeah, Terminator Two is better. Aliens is better than Alien. Uh, oh, without a question. And a that would doubt. that one will start fights though. That comment start gets people mad. They're like, they're well, two different genres. Aliens. They are. They are two different genres, but Aliens is our first military science fiction movie. And it's also better because it has Michael Bean in it. And he's great. Think about all of the great shit Michael Bean has been in. Aliens, the original Terminator, Tombstone. Those three movies. Those three movies. Those three very good uh, movies. So you're forgetting that Michael Bean was the Navy SEAL commander in The Rock. Oh my god, I, I did forget about that. I can't forget that order! That's such a great movie. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> but now I think back at it, I just know like one SEAL would be like, you could 100% give that order. Right? Yeah. We could, yeah. We can talk. You know what? Save him and let him hang, boys. Let's call it a day. I, you know what? Fuck this. We're going on safe. I'm going home. You I'm gave me the wrong dead room. I'm not fucking. I'm not getting shot for this shit. Uh, which nope. uh, since apparently we're boys. talking about good game. Uh, since we're talking about movies, what movie is peak Nick Cage? Like, what's Nick Cage at his Nick Cageist? Thanks which so. Nick Cage era? Face off because Nick Cage is in that movie twice. You not only have Nick Cage being Nick Cage, you get John Travolta pretending to be Nick Cage, and the whole thing is directed by John Woo. It is perhaps the most. I would agree that if you had to pick one movie to, as the most Nick Cage of Nick Cage movies, it would be that or uh, Ghost Rider 2. Ghost Rider is the second Ghost Rider? Yes. He is. There it's was unhinged. He it also ignores what? all of the events of the first movie. Like you know, <laughs> everything that happened in the first movie, they're like, "That's not how he became Ghost Rider." Change. That's da 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 da. Just did whatever. It was. I was like, "Did he?" Which does Nick Cage need help? Does he like have a really expensive mortgage? Because he is in some really weird movies. So I I got burned on this this year where I made fun of someone for doing a lot of really bad movies. And I was not alone in this. There was a large segment of the internet making fun of this person for doing some of the worst movies ever. And it turns out they had a disease and they were like slowly going insane. And they had to make as much money as possible for their family. Ooh. So they agreed to do these films where they got like $5 million per film. And that's like half the budget of the movie. And there's like Ooh. seven of these. And they're, and they're all just, on Netflix. They just show up. If you know who I'm talking about, it is a it is a very well respected actor or formerly well respected actor. 
I will I will never again if I see an actor not doing well in movies be like, what's wrong with this person? Because I learned very quickly like there are things I'm just not aware of. There, there's probably a reason. Fair. <clears throat> uh totally fair. Um uh that way to fucking kill the podcast, Jack. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, moving on. Anyway, moving on from Nick Cage movies to, uh, oh, I'll go back to comments. We're going to mine these comments for some more stuff. <clears throat> uh, we have a comment from a a guy. We did, uh, I will say this, uh, if you left a creepy comment about Annette on the videos that she was in, it got yeeted. You know why? Because Annette is the homies, and we don't tolerate that shit around here. Um, however, we got a nice comment, too. A guy said that she is the brains of this outfit, which is 100% true. Annette is the smartest person that we've had on this show. Like, that's not like... Of of all the people who are lawyers, we aren't it. Yeah, exactly. I, You know, it's funny. Speaking of Annette, I forget she's a lawyer. Like, routinely, I forget that she has a real job where she does lawyer things. And I'm just... And then, you know, it'll come up or something and I'll be like, oh, yeah. You're you're like a like a certified smart person. You got like paperwork to fucking prove it. <laughs> you argue things in court. <laughs> She's also the only lawyer I know that has a giant dragon tattoo on her back. So you know, there's yeah, that straight tattoo. up yakuza. Yeah, yeah. She has a she has a I kill people for money tattoo. Um, that's not what the tattoo says, nor is that what the tattoo means. But you know, it might it's a mean that uh here's a fun one a guy said that staging trigger in a small concealed carry gun is ignorant the gun is designed for close encounters where you pull the weapon and use dao as fast as you can pull the trigger to eliminate the threat that comment was on the uh review of the smith and wesson 351 pd where i was shooting it at 25 yards for a group numb nuts of course i'm gonna stage the trigger if I'm trying to shoot How somebody, how dare with... you do a different thing than the thing I want to talk uh, about? Oh, that's a pet peeve. <clears throat> People who uh, demand that you only review guns in the way that they want them reviewed, right? Oh, yeah. So, like, like let's say, like I've had because I I've reviewed a lot of revolvers and a lot of small carry guns, and people are like, "Why are you shooting this small carry gun at twenty five yards? You're just gonna jam it into someone's belly and pull the trigger." Listen, fuckface, you know. <laughs> unless you don't, yeah, bro. If I, you know that, can you get me some lotto numbers? Yeah, exactly. That's you know, and that's one of the things uh, our mutual friend Tam has talked about is the bad guy gets a vote in what your shooting looks like. You know, actually. He gets the deciding vote. Actually, yeah, he, he, he gets to set the stage of how that shit goes down. Yeah, he, like, he's, the one he's not a contestant. He's Alex Trebek. <laughs> Can you imagine? Hey, oh, R.I.P. Alex Trebek. Uh, hey, real ones. That mustache. Yeah. Oh, that mustache was amazing. That mustache was a- amazing. Um, that was what was that? Oh, which that tangentially reminds me of a rant that I promised my fans on Instagram I was going to do. So I'm going to. F- do it here i hate 2011s as duty guns let's talk about that you're wrong but okay uh okay tell me why i'm wrong let's go I'm I'm not, I'm not, I, you're wrong i'll hear you out but i disagree with you fundamentally the concept of a okay the concept of a 2011 which is a gun that require as a duty gun is is it's dumb as hell and i'll start off with the price point of your average 2011 is what two thousand dollars yeah 2500 bucks right uh that's that is no longer accurate but yes uh, well okay are we counting the springfield prodigy as a we have to does it work okay that that is to be <laughs> determined that uh, is to Hilton, be determined hilton's got actually oh i should have watched hilton's uh video about it beforehand so anyway regardless of whether or not the Springfield Prodigy works, all that did was lower the average price point of a 2011 as a duty gun. So <laughs> hang on, we're gonna do a little math here, okay? If a if a staccato is three grand, which it is, uh, uh, is it? hold on, yeah. Oh, fucking hang on. Let's look I'm at staccatos. A really good time watching this. Hold on, I'm trying to figure out how to spell t- staccato. So you two C's and a T. Staccato 2011. 
Staccato, Pagato. In the hand. Bobby, Bobby. <laughs> okay, yeah. I love that their uh, their homepage. It's it shows like this like it's actually a customer apparently. Um, but you scroll down and it's in the hands of a hero. And I read that and all I can think is in the hands of a hero. <laughs> da, da, da. It's the less known Jenna McLaughlin song. <laughs> yeah. All right. Which one? Uh, 2011 oh, Sarah, Staccato yeah. P D P O. Yeah. Is $2,400. Okay. So let's do some math. 2,400 plus 1,200. Because that's what the uh, prodigy is, right? 1,600 uh -huh. plus 1,600. Pretty sure st uh, the prodigy is 1600. All right. So yeah. 2400 plus 1600 divided by two. That's our average. Two grand is the, now the average cost of an, of a 2011. Fuck you, Jack. All right. So starting with the average cost Point, it, Jack. as two grand, uh, that means that the only agent, the only agencies that will be able to afford them interestingly uh are going to be like very very elite small teams and that sort of stuff fine whatever if lapd swat wants to carry staccatos they can because lapd swat also has something that most law enforcement agencies don't have a full-time armorer staff which you need to keep these guns working that's my problem. So I have no so to to go into the whole 2011 as a duty gun concept. I have no problem with highly specialized agencies that are capable of providing the level of armor or support that these guns need to keep them running through the life cycle of that. What I am opposed to is BFE PD buying these guns for their hundred officers, tossing them into their holsters without the level of after, without the level of armor support that these guns need to keep working. It's the same reason I don't like the idea, like a 1911 as a duty gun. All right, if you want to carry a 2011, fine. You're the one who's responsible for that maintenance. But when you're talking about a general issue gun for law enforcement, where your average cop is not a gun guy, it's a fucking stupid idea. But no one, no one's giving it to every cop. But that's okay. When I say when I'm talking about a duty gun, that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about because there are plenty of people out there who are like, oh, these should be in every, you know, these should be just, oh. a, yeah, they yeah. should be in every holster for a couple of reasons. One, they cost two grand. I don't want my department spending my fucking tax dollars on that <laughs> shit. Go buy Glock thirty fours. Put a dot on them. Um. I don't even think you need a Glock 34. Like, just go buy a G45, put that in everybody's holster, um, and call that like, a day. I do like Glock 34s better, though. That's just me. I, um, I do, too. I've switched almost entirely to 45s for other reasons, but that's... Wait, wait, wait. Are the Glock 45 as in 45 the model or 45... 45 the, the model, not Glock 21s. I'm talking about the, the compact slide on the full body grip frame um so i see you two like a short skirt and a long jacket yes mm -hmm. uh it works out better with a comp and if you're seated it's kind of cool without the comp anyway that's either here or there for the people who can afford it and for the people who have the support for it i think the 2011 is fine it's kind of like we didn't give every cop a pursuit special vehicle back when we did pursuit vehicles god that was a golden era right like and if you could find yourself a pursuit impala you had the world's best sleeper i remember being next to two police pursuit special impalas and they fired them up at the same time and my car shook and they're just ridiculous and the fact is we don't even need them that much now the ford explorer police vehicle will do 135 miles per hour yeah and the the what are, what are they using for the cars now? Crown, it's not a Crown Vic anymore. It's, it's I think it's a tourist body. Charger, Charger. Well, okay. So Charger is the most popular. Yeah, Charger is the and most they're popular. switching a lot. A lot of departments are switching to SUVs, which is the Ford Explorer. The V6 Charger will go 145 miles an hour with a V6 in it. Right, and it'll need... get yeah. So so here here's here's my galaxy brain take. If you can run that. If you put most cops into a car and say drive 140 miles per hour, they are going to kill themselves. <laughs> like, no, it's not. It's, it's, it's true. It's fucked up, but that's the facts. That's why most big departments have a no pursuit policy anymore. Yeah, no, that's or, fair. You are endangering it. Once you get a picture of that license plate, 
call it from the air, follow the guy from two miles back. He's going to run out of gas eventually, and you can take him then. You, you don't need a high-speed pursuit. That does remind me of one of my the guys quotes who's... from Jack uh, Unrelated, which was his comment on Baby Driver. Man, APD violating the hell out of their no-pursuit policy today. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the departments that have a pursuit policy, like GSP has one, they have a higher standard for driving. Those guys go through a very serious driving school. So when I, I, I know a couple of guys who are running 2011s as duty guns right now. They have a higher standard of shooting. Mm. They're getting more out of that thing. So if you yeah, can use it, you can have it. Yeah, that's fair. But so, and a good example of that, I like to use LAPD as examples because, uh, or uh, actually, no, this was, this is LASO, LA Sheriff's Department. So LASD had a, uh, would authorize 2011s and 1911s as duty guns, but you had to take a course. You had to go to the 1911, 2011 shooting course and prove that you could actually shoot the gun to a higher standard before they would authorize you to throw one in your duty rig which i mean it never made sense to me they issued beretta you know 92 so they had a better gun than a 1911 anyways but <clears throat> you know i wonder if sis is still running those glock 30s mm, probably not but they also used to man remember when kimber was all up inside of lapd the yeah, they had the SIS oh, yeah. special with the slicked out slides. They had the SIS special. They had the SWAT guns. Um, you know, the most authentic moment in SWAT, the movie with Colin Farrell, is when the one guy's 1911 goes down on when they're doing the range scene. The guy that the guy that ends up betraying him, his yeah. 1911 goes down, and the actor just sits there and he keeps like shaking it like he's simulating Rico, even though he has got a classic stove pipe going on. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay. Um to go back to mining comments, I just saw this one. Uh, it's from three months ago on guns that flop. Uh, I'm not going to say the guy's name, but this is his comment, which the boss, in quotation marks, has proven to be an asset to the gun day brunch. He has transitioned well, considering the first few episodes. I stand corrected. His knowledge complements the discussions. Thank you. What? I didn't. I, what show is that guy watching? I'm <laughs> maybe that was meant for some other podcast and not this one because I'm like, wait, what? No, I mean, well, El Jefe means the ball. Oh, I, I know what El Jefe means. I'm just El Jefe it, down there. El yeah. Jefe. I was just, I just like it. Like he's transitioned well considering the first few episodes. I've been a professional podcaster and radio co-host for the last ten years. Fuck me, I guess. You but know, seriously, it, I'm glad I lived up to the expectations. Yes, yes. We all had very high expectations of tomfoolery. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's been... Like, ah, there, there are only two people for shenanigans in this podcast. What should How dare they bring a third? third? <laughs> ah, yes, more shenanigans. Oh, man, I just got an email. Uh, I just got an email from my, my boss about the Q4 uh, special makeups, which are like you know, like your Lipsy special editions and things like that. And I can't tell you because we're recording what they are. Um, but the first time I was at work, uh, oh, by the way, guys, if you didn't know, I work for Taurus now. Uh, I was at work and... That's bull. <laughs> uh, 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 Actually, uh, I just kind of got that. That's, no, that's, that's, that's better than we're giving him credit for. All right. <laughs> so nice anyway... Episode. I had to throw in the joke. Uh, so anyway, the, uh, we're in the office and he's like, yeah, you know, we have all these SMUs coming through here. And I was like, fucking special mission units. What? And he's like, no, that's not what that means in this world. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm sad now. <laughs> I'm sure there are some special mission units. Here's I mean, hey, Taurus, Mr. Uh, Javier. <laughs> to be, to be fair. Uh, to our be guns fair. I would be willing to, our, our guns are extremely popular with law enforcement and their traditional antagonists all over South America. So they do be popping in Brazil. I, I had a joke for this, so I'm going to save it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. We got to. Yeah. But also, wait, like, wait. I played Max Payne 3. Your guys' guns are all over that thing. I had a great time with them. Wait, isn't is the judge in Max Payne 3? Yes, it is. Huh. All right. And he carries he carries a PT ninety two because he's in Brazil, and they actually model it as a PT ninety two. Like you can see the 
And what you know what? If we're gonna talk about it, y'all got the safety better than Beretta did. There, I said we, it. We really did. We do. I Rain, said it. Nope, Rain mounted, do. not slime mounted. I am. I'm on board with that. You can also run a PT92 cocked and locked if you want to. Right. Uh, like, and 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 it and I can I can I can I'm not talking shit about Beretta here because I still have I still have some friends that work over there, but we also had a railed model out like a decades. long time before they did. Decades. <laughs> We don't even make a slick one anymore. We're like, people like rails. Here you go. We got a rail. Uh, I might have to go back and redo my Taurus 1911 review where I gave it a C plus. It was kind of, I mean, that particular gun wasn't great. It, it just, it, it was a nine mil though. Like nine mil 1911s are hard to do right. I, I was looking and I'm like, oh, I was going through the catalog and I noticed the two tone wasn't nine mil and I was like, oh, no, oh, sad. Uh, and so uh, if, if it is, if it is, if I will be uh, doing everything I can to bring back the gold accented guns Thank in, you. in 38 super. You. Um, but, you know, we're I, I desperately want to do a special edition uh like the cartel edition 1911 in 38 super with the brown version of guadalupe grips and everything i know exactly who needs to run that and he will appreciate you for it we're gonna give that to our good old buddy santos (laughs) oh yeah lieutenant santos i got a gun for you sir Mark, it's coming, buddy. <laughs> 38 Super. It's coming to you in your redacted country of origin currently. <laughs> yeah, in wherever we're going, you are. We're going to need some good photos, but also uh, OPSEC safe. Yeah. yeah. yeah Thank you for don't... taking our gun to redacted. <laughs> <laughs> also, if you happen to shoot somebody in redacted uh get a photo not like of the body but like well maybe a little bit of the body just like, um, yeah, like a shoe it, it can be a shoe just, <laughs> just it's a it's like in the wizard of oz like the the shoe curled up at the, at the under the house i know we were talking we, we talked about the guns of ukraine earlier um i did watch a video recently where like a bunch of their soft dudes are behind enemy lines and see like a russian jeep and just light it the fuck up um, and I, I was like watching it and I was like, oh, it sucks to be that guy who was just clearly riding along thinking about home and now never will again. Um, driving, driving where he need to drive. And I got it. I got to own it. There were like four dudes there with like the Ukrainian Tavor. It's still out there, baby. Well, yeah, they're getting them oh, yeah. from the <laughs> IDF who's discontinuing with, uh, them. No, they make them there. Because what was one of one of the funny things that came up was like, oh well, international arms dealing, and they're like, we internationally deal arms. It's kind of our thing. <laughs> like we sell a bunch of guns to Ukraine. <laughs> yeah, no, I know they make them there, Jack. The point was, I'm that was a callback to the episode where oh, okay. we talked about the Tavor going the the. The Tavor is going away. away. Israel is yeah. no longer using it, boys. Right. That's we got to get that. I got to get that one in every episode. Uh, anyway, guys, uh, this episode has been very nice. Uh, we haven't said anything mean about anybody, uh, despite the fact that some of our commenters definitely deserve to have mean things said about them. Um, but we'll save that for next week, episode 70. And if you have anything that you would like us to talk about, any topics, uh, so that we don't have another hodgepodge episode where we just ramble about shit for 30 minutes. No, every oh, anime God. has to have a clip episode. This is just our clip episode. Like, share, and subscribe. We'll ah! see you next week. <laughs> <laughs>